I'm Michelle. And I'm Lucy. Welcome to another Cameo episode. These very short episodes will be slotted in between other ones and will cover people who made a fleeting yet tantalizing appearance in other episodes. We don't always have a lot of information about them, so they can't have a full episode of their own, but they are too interesting to abandon completely, and they fill in the gaps and enable us to create as full a picture of the era as we can. And today, Prince Jem, who has shown up in more than one episode. Yeah, well, he's certainly been in the Patreon episode of Mehmed. Yes. And he's been in Charles. I mentioned yes. him. I sort of dangled him in front of people in Charles and said, "Yes, not mentioning anything now because it's too complicated. And wasn't he in one of the Pope episodes for Alexander? I can't remember now. I so don't long. think so. Yeah, I was thinking out of all the episodes we've done that I wouldn't mind if if it had turned up a little bit later in the, yes. <laughs> in the series. <laughs> Alexander's the one because at that time we were being very careful about, OK, it's only what, what connects you with England. Yeah. And in fact, we sort of discovered on the way that it's a, it's, it's a complete mesh. Everything connects yes. to everything else. Yeah, it may not seem like it links just off the cuff, but once we get into it, it is mm. nothing. Everything's affecting England. Yeah, and then when you say that, oh, Henry the Seventh did such and such, ah, but he did that because Alexander said, yes. and then it's all part of yeah. it. But yeah. yes, I sort of regret. Yeah, having it would have been about a five parter. I should think he's a busy yes. man. But... Margaret Beaufort would have been so much longer. I'm finding her everywhere. And yet, when I was just researching her, if you just look for her, you find so little information. There's quite a few like that, yes. Yeah. Really, that's what this podcast's for, isn't it? Just yeah. joining it all up together. Yes. And that's the bit I like, I like most, is suddenly thinking, oh, I know why. <laughs> yes. We've done oh, that. This, <laughs> this one's right after we recorded Charles, and I was re-listening to our episodes before, and we were talking about how intriguing he was. And he got a very, very, very low score for intrigue. <laughs> uh, we were young and naive then. We didn't know what we were talking about. It made me wonder what you had read. You said, wait till we get to Charles. I, was like, I think I just read that he was a licentious hunchback. That was all I uh... read, really. And I thought, oh, <laughs> sounds interesting. <laughs> we didn't even mention a hunchback. Was he hunchback? Uh, one historian um, <laughs> mentioned him being a licentious, a licentious hunchback of dubious morals. That was it. Oh. I thought, well, this can't wait for him. Yeah. And then he ended up being quiet and not intriguing. He was, he was definitely licentious. Definitely licentious. And dubious morals, probably no more than the rest of them. Yeah. They've all mm. dubious morals. Yes. Okay, Prince Jim. Yeah, we heard about him. One of the demands that Charles made to the Pope was that Alexander should hand Jem over to the French. But who was he? And why was he in the Pope's custody in the first place? Mm -hmm. Well, he was the youngest son of Mehmed II. As we've said, the subject of a fascinating series of episodes on <laughs> Patreon. 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 His, I don't think either of us got the sexy voice that uh, <laughs> nope. Ali manages to do. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Ali. Yes. <laughs> Tudoriferous Patreon, covered in thick, creamy milk chocolate. His brother Bajazet won the War of Succession, and Jim had to flee. Unfortunately for Sultan Bajazet, he was not able to kill his brother as soon as his father died, as was the Ottoman way. Yeah, well, now it's law. Mehmed put that in law. What an yeah, idiot. Yeah, well, he broke the law, because he wasn't there. They weren't together. Yeah. Yeah. It says, yeah, dispose of all your brothers and is your succession problem solved? Yeah. Bring in your ashashins. Hmm. It just makes things neat and tidy, doesn't it? Yeah. Neither Bajazet nor Jem were in, in Constantinople when their father died. The vizier, Ahmet, proclaimed Bajazet Sultan. But Jem had several reasons to feel that he should have been made Sultan. For start, he had quite a following among the Janissaries, and you could tell us what Janissaries are. Yes, Janissaries are 99.9%. .9 you could volunteer your, your children. But children taken from conquered areas and basically brainwashed and fully trained to be nothing but a military force. 
So they were extremely well-trained, extremely dedicated to specifically the sultan. Mm, very so loyal. the fact that Jen had them is pretty big. And it's not a small force. There were tens of thousands of them. Mm. It was a massive amount of people. That's pretty sad. I mean, these are child soldiers, aren't they? Yeah. Earliest taken, I believe we said, was five. Oof. But average age was 12. And people who wanted, people who were not of a different ethnicity or a conquered area could give up their children to the Janissaries in the hope that their Janissary would become a vizier, which is where many of them came from, and become rich and powerful and benefit the family, which mm. did occur. So I guess it's sort of the same as child obligates. Have mm. we we haven't really gone into child no, obligates very much. No, I don't so the Christians had this it. Yeah, Christians had the same sort of thing where you'd take your youngest daughter and dedicate them to the church and as soon as they were four or five they went off to a convent to become a nun or to become a priest. But the difference is is they wouldn't be going into battle too no, die. They're not fighting. Yeah. Hmm. Jem had the Jason and Riz behind him and also the people in general. He's just more popular than Badgerset. Which makes me wonder, how did he not become Sultan? Uh, he didn't win. Simple as that. <laughs> <laughs> he fought Simple. for it and he lost. <laughs> oh, goodness. Yeah, he was born after Mehmed became Sultan, which apparently gave him greater kudos. Yeah, because he was born in the purple. He was the son of a Sultan rather than the son of a potential Sultan. Yes, and age did not mean a thing. No. It was whichever brother survived. Yes. Mm -hmm. Well, they're both surviving. That's the odd thing about it. Yeah. It, he didn't deny his brother's right to rule some lands, but only those that Mehmed had had before he became sultan. Yep, because they did do that with brothers before Mehmed put it into law that you had to kill your brother. Well, yeah, he seems to be willing to share. Karamanli Mehmed Pasha who had been with Mehmed when he died, had done his best to hush up the death, giving Jem a chance to get to Constantinople to grab the throne before his brother got there, because it was just oh. a race. You know, first one to Constantinople. Wins? Is it? <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> that sounds so ridiculous, but okay. This all went against Islamic law, because you should bury a body immediately. You shouldn't leave yes. them lying around for three days. Yeah. And it's hard to keep things secret. So, mm -hmm. yeah, Basil Jem beat Jem to it. And as is usual with these people, Jem just didn't say, yeah, never mind, and get on with his life. <laughs> well, he couldn't. If his brother follows... Yeah, if his brother follows the law, he's going to be killed. Mm. So the only option Jem had would be to fight to try to live. Yes, and his brother would have had him killed, given yes. half the chance. Yes. But the vizier got the upper hand, and before Jem could get properly organised, the vizier sent his own army of Thracian soldiers, which scattered Jem's army. Well, Jem was trying for a compromise. He'd rule half, and Bajazet could have half. Okay. And Bajazet said no. <laughs> Bajazet said no, because I suppose Bajazet is thinking, well, it works both ways. I, I yes. can kill Jem, but he can kill me. <laughs> yes. And all I'm doing is letting him solidify his power. Yes. No. And gain more and more troops that yeah. might actually win something next time. Yeah. Jem fled to Jerusalem and then on to Egypt. While he was in Egypt, he went on pilgrimage to Mecca, making him the only Ottoman prince ever to do so. Really? Mm-hmm. Oh. Yeah, apparently. I mean, I, I thought don't, that I, was a requirement. Apparently not. Hmm. Maybe it's like uh, we heard with... Um, Mr. Tiptoft, you sort of assume that lots of people went on pilgrimages, but yeah. he was the only nobleman of his era actually to actually to go to Jerusalem. Yeah. Hmm. Jem didn't give up, though. Then he gathered together another army and set off again, only to be soundly beaten again. Oh, dear. <laughs> He's just not very good at it, I don't no. think. No. Bajazet offered his brother a pension. If only he'd lived quietly in Jerusalem and stopped trying to grab the throne. Liar. <laughs> well, Jem refused, and yeah, I think he was right to do so. I can't see him surviving long if he'd agreed to that. No. 
So he sent envoys to ask protection from the Knights of St John on Rhodes. And this was no easy task since Bajazet was watching his brother closely. After several attempts, the envoys ended up heading to Rhodes on a little boat that they found in a shed. So they stole it? Yeah. I think they were just <laughs> running, running away. <laughs> oh, dear. There's a boat. Get in that. And they all rowed off. <laughs> Does the boat leak? Probably. Oh, prob- I, I envisage them frantically bailing, bailing. out as they go. <laughs> But it's interesting that he's chosen to get protection from a Christian organisation. Well, that's the only thing that his brother wouldn't have control over, Mm. I guess. Yeah. Yeah. So smart. Yeah, yeah. Does he convert? No. Oh. No. Oh, no. They entreated the head of the Knights of St. John, the Grand Master Pierre de Pusson, to send a fleet to pick up Jem. But in fact, they didn't have to since Jem just turned up, having also leapt onto a small boat as Badger's <laughs> soldiers closed in. Goodbye! <laughs> he's, he's behind them on a pedal, though, or something. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> he was received with full honour. Uh, but when he asked for military aid from the knights, he was told they would have to have a word of the Pope first. Oh, well, yeah. Yeah. I mean, they can't just sort of... We're Christian. You're Islamic. Yeah, it's an international Hmm. situation. Yeah. (laughs) They can't take it on just themselves. No. Um, But he was told, uh, wouldn't he be more comfortable in France? (laughs) Yeah, just jog on. That's what we want. Just keep moving. Keep going. (laughs) He must have agreed since he sailed for Savoy in September 1483 with Pierre Dubuisson and some of the knights. And it would be nice to think that the knights had taken him under their wing out of pious goodness. But, you know, this is the 15th century. <laughs> and we're hard pressed to find anyone who does anything out of pious goodness. Yeah. For a start, he was very useful to them politically. Dobuisson wrote, quote, James faction will revive if he be furnished with troops and his brother, who is a coward, will be frightened out of his wits. Oh, my goodness. He has few good generals in his service, and the best of all, Ahmed Pashaj, the victor of Otranto, is only waiting for a propitious moment to turn against him. Of this he has assured Prince Jem in writing, begging him not to despair of fortune. Christian powers need make no great sacrifices, for we shall be helped in Europe by the prince's partisans. Sultan Bajazet, surrounded by enemies, will be unable to offer resistance, unquote. Why do people make this stuff up? (laughs) Honestly, you have no information. Where are you getting this from? Yeah, and if I were Jem, I don't think I'd count on Ahmed to to rise up on his part. No, and I wouldn't say your brother's a coward. Yeah, and for a start, he's the Grand Vizier, and we know from watching films that they were always sneaky and lurk in shadows. And want the daughter of the Sultan. Yes. (laughs) (laughs) Dampisson went on, quote, Now is it in the power of Christendom to destroy the detestable race of Mohammed, unquote. So not much pious goodness there. But, I mean, they are a Christian company in medieval times, so it's, <laughs> there's none of this belief in faiths and accepting everybody else's belief as being no. parallel to your own. As far as Jem was concerned, he was just waiting for the word from the Pope and then the knights and his army could set off to overthrow Basajet. And he offered perpetual peace between the Christians and the Ottomans. Unfortunately, he didn't realise that Dupuisson had thought it over and decided that a much better idea would be to offer to hang on to Jem and make sure he didn't try anything. So, complete change, because they were telling him he should try something and now they're saying, OK... We'll cling on to him and we'll make sure he doesn't try anything in return from lots of money from his brother, Bajazet. Mm. And, but I didn't see this anywhere, but it did occur to me that if there were perpetual peace between Christianity and Islam, the Knights of St. John would be out of a job. Yes, they would. Yeah, I don't know if that, that occurred to them to think, oh, what do we do if there's peace? We just sit here looking pretty. Yeah. But they they betrayed him for money. Of course they did. Meanwhile, Bajazet had been seeking peace with the knights for a while. 
And now this became more urgent for him since the implication was, yes, we'll hold on to him if you pay us, but if you don't pay us, he's coming for you, and so are we. A treaty was drawn up between them, but Jem wasn't part of it. He wasn't even mentioned. He was mentioned in a private communication. And as any loving brother would, Badgerzet <laughs> asked Dubuisson, quote, to keep, care for and protect him beneath your wings, that his passion for war might die away, unquote. So obviously Badgerzet has is concerned for his brother's welfare. Oh, of course. Mm. He even offers to pay for his brother's expenses, an annual pension of 45,000 ducats. And obviously, this is how it's coming across in the treaty. You know, mm-hmm. if you look after my brother, because, you know, I want him to be safe and I'll pay for his clothes and his food and everything. Don't worry about that. But obviously, they've discussed it behind the scenes and said, you keep my, my brother a prisoner and I will pay you for not releasing him. Yeah. Which is not quite the same thing. No. <laughs> But then he's hanging over your head the entire time that yeah. he's alive. Yeah. Like, that would be awkward. And there's I nothing to stop them awkward. saying, no, we want more money and more money and yeah. more money. Yeah. Mm. Hmm. But Jem is now a prisoner. But bizarre, bizarrely, a prisoner who was well kept at his brother at enemy's expense. So he's a useful captive for people to have. Yeah. You get the money. The only, yeah, as you say, you're able to hang Jem over Badgerzet. Now, yeah. does he stay in like a prison dungeon thing, or is he no. housed respectedly, respectfully? He's housed respect respectfully. I mean, luxuriously, in fact, but oh. secure, securely. Okay. I mean, they don't want to lose Kinda. him. He's bringing him money. Yeah, it's just weird that a... Christians are getting paid to keep care of somebody who's Islamic. Mm-hmm. And I'm assuming they're allowing him to continue his religion since you said he doesn't convert. He doesn't convert, no. Wow. Mm. Yeah, I was thinking of Prince Jem as being Sultan Bajajet's Perkin Warbeck. Yeah. Very similar. And I wondered. Well, again, Except I he's real. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I wondered, although, again, I didn't read it anywhere, whether Ferdinand and Isabella and Charles VIII had the treatment of Jem in mind when they offered to buy Perkin from James IV of Scotland. They thought, oh. well, we can see how well this Jem thing is working. Yeah. We could do the same with Perkin and Henry. Yeah. Then I wouldn't be forking out all that money from the Treaty of Atap, would I? I'd be getting money instead. <laughs> yes. Mm-hmm. Anyway, that's why so many people were so keen to get their hands on Jem. And that's the Pope, Venice, France, Hungary and Naples all had a go at getting their mitts on him. He spent a year in Savoy and then when Louis XI died, he was moved to France. And he couldn't go to France before that because Louis had said he didn't want Muslims on French soil. That, and then he stayed at the Chateau de Bourgneuf with de Passant's nephew, Guy de Blanchefort. And he was well treated, as we said, but there was a fortified tower built especially to keep him in. And it's still there. Do you want to go and see it? So at that point, he was still in a dungeon? or He's in a, he's, he's in a tower. Which he's is... Not, I just never in a dungeon, as far as I know. But he's in a, a tower. I mean, it's a very secure tower, but it's... I'm thinking the Lon- Tower of London kind of thing. But no. It looks quite forbidding from the outside. I looked at a picture of it, but um, I gather it was quite luxurious inside. Okay. They looked after him. Okay. I mean, you don't want him dying of anything, do you? No, he's a cash cow. <laughs> yes. In 1489, he was handed over to Pope Innocent VIII with the permission of Charles VIII. And the Pope and the King of Hungary, Matthias Corvinus, had both been wrangling over getting him because he's that year's must-have prisoner, I think. <laughs> <laughs> Next year, we'll pick a different person. <laughs> yes. Well, if you remember, Innocent was keen for the French to take over Naples. Yes. And so Charles probably didn't see any problem with the arrangement. You know, we're all on the same side. Oh, dear. He didn't think ahead about there might be a possible change of Pope somewhere along the line. (laughs) (laughs) And it's easy to see what the Pope got out of it. The 45,000 ducats now went to him. And Jem had a bodyguard of Knights of St. John to make sure that nothing happened to him. 
although obviously it's unlikely anything would happen from the Pope's side. He's perhaps the only person who is safe from the Pope, I think. Oh, dear. Maybe they were afraid of Bajazet sending assassins. Assassins. Assassins, which we will see. Uh, the Pope promised to pay a 10,000 ducat fine if he handed Jem over to anyone else without Charles VIII's permission. But, you know, why would he Seriously. do that? Hmm. He's Charles's property, still. So? You're the Pope. <laughs> why would you pay anything? Hmm. Well, what did Charles get out of it? Well, there were red hats for both Dubuisson and the Archbishop of Bordeaux. And interestingly, I found it interesting, the Pope promised to scupper the plans of Alain d'Albray to marry Anne of Brittany. Really? Alain d'Albray was a French noble who had sided with the Duchy of Brittany, so he was yes. a French rebel. Yes. And Charles was very keen that he shouldn't get Brittany. Yeah. And he already had plans to marry Anne of Brittany himself, so he yes. was quite keen that Dobre didn't get a chance to. So the Pope well, said, that's fine. I will make sure it never happens. Well, Anne was making sure it den- never happened either. Yes, but <laughs> she, she was... didn't have quite as much clout as the Pope. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not marrying this man. <laughs> no. No, he was quite an unsavory character, I think. Yes, he was. Charles wanted to marry Anne of Brittany, and he was keen enough to hand over Jem to the Pope. So it's, it's strange how all these things are linking up again. Yeah. 13th of March, 1489, Jem entered Rome and extraordinarily considered he was a prisoner and an infidel. <laughs> he was greeted by throngs of people and cardinals and members of the Senate, you know, the lot. Was it just that kind of the human nature of gaping at things you've never seen before? Partly. Or was this a procession kind of deal? It was a procession as well. But, yeah, I'm not wow. surprised that people looked at him in awe because if you if you do look at pictures of him, he is wearing the most massive turban. Oh, Huge. is he? Huge. <laughs> I don't know how he's keeping it on, really. Oh. But apparently it had been prophesied that a sultan would live in the Vatican. I don't know whether it's one Where? of those prof- prophecies that happened before or after the event. But... After. 50 years after, Probably. there will be a prince of Islam who will mm. stay in the church for such yes. and such years. We got Ooh. it exactly right. Yeah, what do you know? Ooh. The Pope's first meeting with him was less auspicious, though. Jem, instead of showing the reverence due to a pontiff, just walked up the steps and kissed him on the right shoulder. <laughs> I don't know why on the oh. right shoulder. <laughs> OK. Is that a, might be a specific greeting of the time? I'm not sure. I have no idea. He then told him he'd like a quiet word with him sometimes, since he had some things to tell him that would be to the advantage of Christendom. Ooh. And that's not how most people approach the, approach the Pope. No. <laughs> Genuflect, kiss the ring, kiss the foot. They don't just go up and slobber all over him, yeah. Jem had previously said that if he gained back the sultanship with Christian aid, he would remove all Turks from Europe and even give back Constantinople. Wow. He must have been unbelievably self-centred to offer to give back the city that his father <laughs> took so much effort to win. Yeah. And all those lives, yeah, all those people exiled. Oh, he said, no, you can have it back. Just make me sultan. Mm. Innocent got very excited about this. Yeah, I would too. Yeah, and thought, right, now's the time for a crusade. And all the other Christian leaders said, Yay! <laughs> didn't do anything <laughs> I think the enthusiasm was there <laughs> oh dear Bajazet realised that having his rebel brother in the hands of the Pope was a really really bad idea and so in 1489 and 90 there were several attempts to poison Jem he was worried about assassination in 1490 a dispossessed baron had been discovered poisoning the well that supplied the Vatican. And this would obviously have taken out a lot more people than just Jem. Yes. So I'm not sure whether Jem was collateral damage in that one. And he was just cr- and annoyed with the Vatican as a whole. But I read somewhere that the, the water was already contaminated. That's why popes were always sick. Like, there was something with the water. Oh, it might explain why they're so weird as well. Ah. Because they all are. Well, Jem was justifiably paranoid about this. He told, when he he received a letter 
He told the ambassador to lick it first in case it had been impregnated with poison. It could have just said, read it to me and not touched it, really. Yeah. <laughs> Failing in assassination, Bajazet entered into a pact with the Pope. He promised to pay a pension if Jen were kept safe. Shall we say, in other words, don't let him go. And I presume this is on top of the 45,000 ducats the Pope is already receiving. Because the ante's sort of risen a bit here, isn't it? Because mm -hmm. now Jem said that he, they can have Constantinople back. Everyone's suddenly got a bit more interested in the whole thing. Yeah. Now seems doable. The Sultan promised not to attack Italy from the Adriatic. And the Pope was severely criticised for making pact with infidels. But he could justifiably say, what choice did I have? You lot wouldn't come on a crusade with me. Oh. You only have yourselves to blame. Muffin. <laughs> As for Jem, yeah, his life was not unpleasant. He lived in luxury. He could go hunting whenever he pleased. But he wanted to be sultan. Well, this wasn't enough for him. Yeah. In 1489, he had quite a nice surprise. He'd had two sons. The older one was called Murad, and he'd been left on Rhodes, where he was attending school, where he learnt weaponry, language and medicine, which seems like an interesting curriculum. Yeah. He had converted to Christianity and had taken oh. the name Peter. And oh. in November, he arrived in Rome. And Jem, who intermittently suffered from depression, was thrilled to see the boy, since he hadn't seen him since he was two. That was 12 years pre previously. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. I don't know what he thought about the boy's conversion. I don't suppose he was at all happy about that. No. I'm surprised Bassajet isn't still trying to get him as well. Yeah, you would think so. Yeah, because he's still in line for the throne. Unless he heard that the boy had converted and thought, well, no one's uh, going to follow him here now, are yeah, they? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, mm. you're right. In 1492, Pope Innocent died, and Jem then became the prisoner of Alexander after a brief hiatus. And we have nice descriptions, or useful rather than nice, of Jem from our old friend Johann Birchett. And he's the one who spent his time trying to get Alexander to follow protocol. I was exasperated because Alexander would never get in the right clothes or make, make to the right speeches or anything. We likened him to C-3PO in the um, yes. episode. And he kept a diary, which tells us a lot that we wouldn't know otherwise. All about how he broke protocol. He broke protocol. Yes, I'm really Again. annoyed with Alexander today. I told him this was the way it was supposed to go, but he didn't listen. <laughs> <laughs> that was funny. He doesn't listen to me. Yeah, poor, poor Birchard. In 1493, the Turk well, he's about to be annoyed again. The Turkish ambassador <laughs> arrived in Rome. And we learned from Birchard that the procession consisted of ambassadors from Venice, Florence, Siena, and Naples, and that after them came Prince Jem and Juan Borgia riding together. Juan. Yeah. I don't know what Jem thought of this, since it, the ambassador was there to pay his next instalment of his incarceration. Oh, yeah. I don't know whether it was put to him that, oh, no, you're, here's, here's your allowance, not realising, oh, right, this is, <laughs> this is our bribe. <laughs> Birchard, as usual, was scandalised because the ambassador looked for somewhere to sit. Oh, you don't sit in the Pope's presence. No, that, well, Pertchard tried to explain that. <laughs> <laughs> of course he did. He, I can see him running up behind him, pulling the chair away. <laughs> yes. like, no, 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 no. <laughs> um, that didn't work. Yeah, he, he said to him, you know, even, even ambassadors can't sit down. So this ambassador squatted on the ground instead. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sitting. <laughs> then the interpreter had to squat on the ground as well. Oh, dear. I think the Pope, I don't think Alexander was nearly as bothered as Birchard was. <laughs> he probably thought this was hilarious, yes. watching Birchard have a <laughs> coronary over in the corner. <laughs> no, no, lift it. Could you see Birchard behind the ambassador trying to pull him up by his shirt? Yes. <laughs> no, you can't. You can't. No. <laughs> um, well, yeah, I've come across several times when... Things have gone awry, and Alexandra has just found it hilariously funny, and I'm sure it's watching Birchard that's I'm done just it. Just laughing. I would be laughing. That would be hilarious. <laughs> 
Well, the Pope asked the ambassador if he had anything to say and was told that the Sultan was pleased to entrust his beloved brother into the Pope's care. Birchett, in the meantime, was inwardly wincing because, you know, once people start squatting on the floor, where's it going to end? <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. If people were shocked at Innocent making pacts with the Ottomans, they would have been horrified at what Alexander did once he realised that Charles VIII was on his way to Rome. And this was when Charles invaded Italy to get the throne of Naples that we heard about at such length <laughs> before. In May... The Pope contacted Bajazet to ask for help to keep Charles out of Naples. And in June, he wrote to him again asking for money. He was actually saying, could I have an advance on the gem money, please? The French are coming and we need the money now. And this didn't stay secret for long, because the envoy Alexander sent to Bajazet was intercepted, by it couldn't have got worse really, by Giovanni della Rovere. Oh, no. The brother of the Della Rovere, who was to become Pope, Julius II. Yes. And he commandeered the 45,000 ducats that the envoy had brought over. Thank you. And, <laughs> and sent the Pope's correspondence to his brother, who had it published. <gasps> ah. And the letter from... It's really damning. The letter from Alexander... And these were authenticated at the time, these letters. Okay. Although they were authenticated by people who had been happy to bring Alexander down. Yes. Yeah. The letter said that Charles was coming to Italy for the purpose of, quote, tearing out of our hands Gem Sultan and obtaining possession of the King of Naples. And not only will he hasten that he may seize the said Gem Sultan and secure a kingdom, but also that he may be able to cross over into Greece and wage war against the territories of your highness, which ought to be known to your majesty. They even say that a fleet under Gem Sultan will be sent to Turkey, unquote. I'm sorry. So they're saying that the Pope is warning the other religion that people crusade against that a crusade is coming from the French. Precisely. Oh, dear. He's warning the infidel about Christians. Oh and he's the Pope. Oh, dear. Yeah. Yes. It continues, quote... If the French should be victorious, your majesty would suffer great injury, both by their seizing Jem Sultan and by the expedition that would follow, in the which they would have the assistance against your highness of the Spanish, English, well, good luck with that one, <laughs> <laughs> Hungarians, Poles, Bohemians, and the Emperor Maximilian, also good luck with that one, who were all powerful princes, unquote. Not the King of Denmark, though. No, 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 no. <laughs> Well, this makes me doubt the authenticity. Yes. It reads to me to be the sort of thing you might write if you wanted to discredit someone in the eyes of all the important people. Yeah, those specific people. Yeah. Look what he said about you. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, the Pope cares nothing for you. He's siding with the Sultan rather than you. Or a crusade. <laughs> yep. And why is he warning, saying that the French are coming? Because the French did say that they were going to take Naples and then move on. It did say that. Charles had intended to go after the Turks, or at least that's what he had said. He did say that. Yeah. Yes. How much he intended to, we don't know, because he never did it. But I, th I guess the Pope doesn't want to lose his 45,000 ducats. It's a, a lot year. of money. Yeah. 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 I'd take that every year. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's quite likely Giuliano de la Rivera wanted to discredit his rival. Mm -hmm. I mean, once he became Pope, Julius wasn't above, you know, a little subterfuge now and again. No. Yeah, well, carry on. In the correspondence, Alexander suggests to Bajazet that he persuades Venice to help protect Naples. Because Bajazet and Venice have made this that truce that we heard about in Charles's episode. And that was why Venice didn't want Charles to make a move on Naples, because they didn't want to rock the boat with the Ottomans. Bajazet wrote back, saying that all seemed in order, but he had a request for the Pope. Quote, You say the King of France intends to get possession of Jem, our brother, who is in the hands of your potency. This is greatly against our desire, and from it will become very considerable loss to your magnitude. And all Christians would suffer injury. It might make for the peace, benefit and honour of your potency, as well as my contentment, if you would cause the said Jem, our brother, 
who has in the past been sentenced to death. Well, as you said, Mehmed made that law that you should kill your brother and who is in your hands of your magnitude altogether to die. Kill my brother, please. And that's that's quite blatant. I mean, it's he's not telling him to take care of him or take him no. take him for a little walk or anything that might be misconstrued. <laughs> he's just saying he should be made altogether to die. If your magnitude were disposed to satisfy me in this particular, as you may in your discretion think well of doing, it ought to be effected as quickly as possible and according to the method that your magnitude thinks best. I don't care how you kill him; just kill him. Yeah, come on, you've, you've done a few. You know how it's done. <laughs> wow. I keep thinking that there should be some family feeling, but we do have to keep in mind that they were raised entirely separate. And they were raised to be rivals. Yes, they were yeah. raised to try to take out their brother. So the opposite of family feeling here. Yes. <laughs> well, a lot of family feeling, just not nice feeling. Yes. I really couldn't imagine Telling somebody to kill my brother. No. (laughs) But can you imagine asking the Pope to kill your brother? No. No. You're supposed to be the most peaceable man in the world. Yeah. (laughs) Turn the other cheek and all that. Well. Do me a favor. (laughs) I mean, he's not doing it to be nasty because he says the said gem should be removed from the troubles of this world and his soul transferred to another life where it will have more perfect rest, unquote. Except that the from the Pope's point of view, he's going to hell for eternity because he's of the wrong religion. Yeah, but from Bajazet's point of view, he's going to <laughs> he's going to the right place. And he's only thinking uh, of the welfare of his immortal soul, obviously. Uh, yeah. Bajazet then offers Alexander three hundred thousand ducats so he can buy estates wow. for his children. Wow. So somebody's had a word with Bajazette and said, okay, you want to get around the Pope? Buy his kids something nice. Yeah, especially Cesare. <laughs> especially Cesare. Well, Juan at this point. Oh, Juan, yeah, Juan's Juan was alive. the favourite until... Until he died. He, he was, yes, he was done away with. The publication of these documents elicited widespread shock, as I suspect of it was it too. Did. Yes. To me, it just seems to tick too many of the right boxes. <laughs> Except it's Alexander. I could see Alexander doing something stupid like that. Hmm. Yeah. But but we know what Julius is like as well. Right, the the list is that the Pope's making deals with the infidel. Yeah. He's warning him about a possible potential Christian attack. Yeah. He's receiving requests to kill somebody who's in his care. Yeah. And then the icing on the cake, and here's a little something for the kids. Yeah, it totally doesn't... doable. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we can see it from both sides. Yes, Alexander <laughs> was completely unscrupulous. He might have done it. But Rivera was completely unscrupulous. The only way I... <laughs> they should have said in that letter that they will give him a thousand virgins. And then Alexander would be sold. Done. He has no shortage of virgins. <laughs> He doesn't have to wait to heaven to get to her chins, unfortunately. His girlfriend, Julia, would be like, no! Yes. (laughs) Oh, man. Uh, Also, yeah, there there are some incongruities in in these letters. Yeah, there's no virgins. (laughs) We already discussed one. Yes, in Rome? (laughs) <laughs> Not likely. Not with Cesare and <laughs> Alexander about. Selton Bajazet dates these letters, quote, from the nativity of the prophet Jesus, unquote. And he refers to the Quran as, quote, our gospels, unquote. Uh, that doesn't ring true. No, very. That very sounds true. like a rookie mistake, really. <laughs> in but forgery. did he write them in Latin or was this a translation error? It could have been, or he might have been trying to write in a way that he thought, well, the, this is, the Pope will understand, Yeah, you know, Jesus and Gospels. Hmm. If this were a forgery concocted by Della Rivera, it might have backfired, since people were shocked mainly that the Sultan could have believed that the Pope would possibly, in a million years, have considered assassinating his brother. I mean, the Pope. 
He's the representative of Jesus, thou shalt not kill Christ, isn't he? This is Alexander, though. Maybe, yeah. I can't... I mean, cynical people like us would probably think, well, of course the Pope's not going to kill him, <laughs> bringing him 45,000 <laughs> ducats a year. Yes. <laughs> and not, the, of course, the Pope's not going to kill him, he's the Pope. <laughs> yes. But it's interesting, if they were looking for something to tarnish Alexander with, that they had to go way off the scale of corruption, <laughs> since anything less will have been considered sort of everyday behaviour for the Borgias. Yes. You know, people are already shocked that the Muslim was living in the Vatican at all. That wasn't all. Yeah. Really. Yeah. Birchett reproduces these letters in his diary, but he doesn't say whether he believed them or not, which is a pity. <laughs> I'd like to know. But we do know that some pages are missing from his diary, so it's quite <laughs> Oh, I wish we had those pages. <laughs> I don't think we're meant to. <laughs> Alexander was later to claim that these documents were forgeries and he blamed Della Rivera, which was odd because he remained on good terms with Giovanni Della Rivera, who had intercepted the letters in the first place, oh. and with Bocchiado, who had verified the authenticity of them. Oh. Apparently, it has been conclusively proven that, that if they were forgeries, Della Rivera wasn't behind it. And I tried to chase this up. The article I read this in gave the reference of The History of the Papacy by Mandel Crichton, volume 4, page 348. So I chased that up and discovered that the book only goes up to 314. So, so I don't know why. Different prints? Possibly. Hmm. But perhaps we'll come back to that from another angle at some point. Why it hmm. wasn't. Well, when we get to Julius... Why it can't have been him that did the forgery. Yeah. Hmm. But that was on Google Books, the one I found. When Charles entered Rome, Alexander had Jem secretly taken to the Castel Sant'Angelo, which was fortified, and so he'd be safer. As we saw in Charles's episode, he and the Pope negotiated terms, and one of those was that Charles would take Jem for the duration of the campaign and would return him to the Pope at the end. Such a random thing to demand. <laughs> it does seem sort of power for power's sake, doesn't it? I'm taking yes. it back. Well, I don't want yes. you to. Yeah, but I'm here now. <laughs> yeah. And, as you know, you might say, you and whose army? Well, uh, I'm surrounded by them. Yes. So. <laughs> <laughs> These ones. <laughs> but the Pope would continue getting the money. And this now, now amounted to 120,000 crowns. Well, I'm not sure about crowns and ducats. History books do that all the time. Suddenly you're into different yeah. denominations. You think, well, but all the time. Crowns, ducats, pounds. Livre. Livre. Yeah. Groats. But this was equal to all other papal revenue combined. So that's Peter's pence, the alum trade, indulgences, the lot. Wow. Yeah. So he is well worth keeping. Yes, he is. And Bajazet sent the Pope the Holy Lance, which appears Christ died. So. <laughs> <laughs> Number 437. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> and much of the work done on the Sistine Chapel was paid for by Jem's ransom. Oh, I thought he would have spent it all on his kids. No, Michelangelo got some of Jem's ransom. Oh. Birchett said of these negotiations that the Pope was, quote, somewhat unfittingly dressed in his white cloak and biretta and his decorated <laughs> stole, unquote. <laughs> well, I don't know what you meant to me by when you're meeting the King of France, but apparently not that. <laughs> How dare you? Yes. Wear the right thing. Yeah, he's trotting behind him with his clothes. <laughs> Quick, nip, him, nip behind the curtain and change. I said we'd come back to how likely it was that Sultan Bajazet would ask the Pope to assassinate his brother. Jem had only been in Naples for three days when he suddenly died. Oh dear. Some think that Alexander did what had been asked of him. Yeah. Now, look in his coffers. Does he have 300,000 ducats? Mm. Mm. No, he's broke. <laughs> Constantly. <laughs> well, if you remember... 
one of the deals of the treaty was that Cesare Borgia should go with Charles down to Naples, you know, as, as a sort of lieutenant or possibly right. as a hostage, really. Yeah. Uh, so, so Cesare had been there for a while, at least. And Cesare likes killing people. He does like killing people. Hmm. And then he sneaked back to Rome. Uh, could he have given Jem a slow-acting poison of some sort? Hmm. Hmm. So, there's a little insertion here. While Jem was with the Pope, remember the episode where we were talking how they were going to smear a door frame with some sort of goop to kill yeah. King Henry? Yeah. So, to prove that this alchemist could kill people like that. That's right. He kills off one of Jem's Turk friends. Yes, I'd forgotten about that. Yes. Yes, through alchemical means. Yes. Nobody knows how. No. And that's what convinces the conspirators that this goop would kill Henry. Hmm. So, see, it, it totally fits in with England. <laughs> Yet it again. does. And that goop might well have worked, except that the bloke lost his nerve and chucked it away and then thought, yes. oh, good heavens, I ought to have something to take back and brought back sort of ashes and soot and yeah. some sort of <laughs> gunk. <laughs> but the goop might have worked for all we know. So, yeah, maybe it was maybe it was uh, door goop that killed door him. Goop. Yes. He walked through that door. Mm hmm. Yeah, although Charles had Jem in the flesh, Alexander was still getting the money for him, so it just seems unlikely. that he's, I, do, I just don't feel that Alexander's going to get rid of him. But I, the article I was reading, The Case of Prince Jem, A Curious Episode in European History by G. V. Jordan, was convinced not only that the Borgias were behind Jem's death, but that proved the authentication of the letters, since what had been said in them had come to pass. Right. It seems like arguing from the, from the wrong direction to yes. me. Yes, yes. <laughs> Bajazette had asked the Pope to kill his brother, and the brother was um, dead. Yeah. But, yeah, there were too many unknowns. Yeah. We don't know if the letters were genuine. We don't know if Alexander killed Jem. Maybe Bajazette did. Maybe he died of pneumonia. Lots of people did. Or syphilis. <laughs> that's, yeah, that's, that's not impossible. <laughs> it would have been very quick. A little huh? too quick, I think. Oh, OK. I think. In Assassin's Creed Revelations, he was killed by assassins. Yes, this is the only person Jason knows about because he plays that video game. <laughs> <laughs> and apparently he also had the Apples of Eden. I won't even pretend to understand what that's all about. I've never I don't played it. Know. <laughs> Jem had wanted to die on Muslim soil, and that didn't happen. But his body was taken back to Bajazet, who treated it with all due honour, as he might well now he's no threat. Yes. I'm sure he was saying, I paid these people to look after him nicely, and they did, but happened. now he's died, and we're all desperately sorry. Or did he just want to get the body away before anyone could test it for poison? <laughs> uh, <laughs> did they have the ability to test for poison? I don't know. I don't hmm. know. Oh, smelling smell of bitter almonds, isn't it? That's what you've got to look out for. For cyanide. Yes. <laughs> Uh, it was nice that the Christian authorities thought to send him back to where he'd wanted to be. Unfortunately, it took four years, and the reason for the delay was that they were selling the body to Badgerset. Oh, wow. They wanted a good price for it, and they mm. got 300,000 ducats and the promise of permanent peace. Wow. And peace is nice, but it seems that Jem was worth more dead than he had been alive. Yes. Maybe the Pope did kill him for 300,000 ducats. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, that's that's a one-off payment. But otherwise, he'd be getting 45,000 for life. Per then year. He, yeah. Hmm. But then he's getting on by that point. But he's also not getting 40,000 a year because he does have to pay for the upkeep of Jem. Well, he's getting 120 by this point, but yes, he does. Hmm. Hmm. I'm going to say he killed him. <laughs> I uh, like Alexander. We could, <laughs> we could put a poll on the website. Did yes. the Pope kill Prince Jem? Yeah. Possibly via Cesare, but ultimately through the Pope. Mm-hmm. And that is the story of sort, of sort of Prince Jem, but mainly about how other people 
took advantage of him. (laughs) Took advantage of him. (laughs) Made money out of him. (laughs) Yes. Yeah, poor bloke. But then he was willing to give up everything to become Sultan again, which does put you off him a bit. Yes. Mm. Especially Constantinople. Yeah. Mm. He would have been assassinated if he had managed it. People would be angry. Yeah, they'd be furious, yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Anyway. Goodbye. Goodbye. (laughs) (laughs) Another another episode that fizzles out. Yep. (laughs) 